My name is Terry Ryber and I'm going to take you through a quick overview of what a typical business requirements document would look like. A business requirements document is what business users and business analysts would use to document the requirements for software that they're either going to build or perhaps they were going to purchase from a vendor. So I'm just going to go through this document really quickly and show you typically the sections that you would find in, in this style of document. The first page is obviously the title page. Here we say that it's a business requirements document and this document uh, that I have here I'm showing the requirements for a business association website. So a business association uh, would like to document the requirements to create a website for their business association. And again, you'd usually have the author, the date, and some versioning. The next page is typically the table of contents of what's in the document. The third page would be amendment history. You could have like version 1.0, and then if later on at a future date you create another version, you could have version 1.1, 1.2, etc., etc. Typically, you would have an overview section. And this is an overview for a business association website. So it basically just says that's what we're doing and we're going to document some functional and non-functional requirements. The next section is a list of stakeholders and these are individuals who would be affected or impacted by building or, or having this website built. And it's a, a list of stakeholders. I have a separate video that goes into uh, how to come up with a list of stakeholders. So I won't spend too much time here, but these are the people that are essentially going to, who are going to give you the requirements that are going to end up in this document. We also have a, a scope section where we talk about the business processes affected. I won't go into that too much right now. I'll probably create a video later on to address that, um, which applications are affected. In this case, uh, basically we're talking about you know members wanting to sign up for the business association and, and a few other things okay here are the functional requirements now I have a separate video which you can look up that talks about how to do functional requirements in detail but this is basically a list of it's like a wish list of, of what the users want in the system in this case it's a business uh, association website so for instance they want a home page you can see this first requirement that lists the purpose of the organization um, they're going to have for instance FR006 a contact us page so this is really their, their list of what they want to see in the software solution and in a big project you know you could have obviously more than five or six stakeholders you could have 20, 30, 50 stakeholders I've worked on projects with 100 stakeholders and you could have anywhere from half a dozen to, you know, I've seen projects that have 800 requirement statements for various systems. It can get, they can get really huge, the list, for sure. Then you'll see non-functional requirements. And again, I have a separate video that talks about how to create non-functional requirements. And these are requirements that are not specific to any feature in the system. It's more things like cost, the time frame that you'd like this solution to be in place. Uh, things like backup, recovery, uh, security, that sort of thing. So there's not really requirements that you can touch and feel, but more in, in the solution, but more just requirements, sort of meta requirements around around the system. And then you'd have appendices where you could basically put in other information. So that's the basic format of a requirements document. And certainly people can put far more information in than what I have, but typically you'll talk about stakeholders, the scope of the, of the solution a little bit, the functional and the non-functional requirements. Now for more information, you can go to my website, www.softreq, that's S-O-F-T, like soft, R-E-Q, like requirements, REQ.com, that's softreq.com, and I've got um, basically templates, like I have a, a Word template that you could use and download and you could use it for your requirements. I have this document where it's, where it's actually been completed and filled in for a typical business association website. I have frequently asked questions 
and I have a list of videos that you know drill into the detail of how to do you know how to come up with a list of stakeholders how to do functional requirements how to do non-functional requirements and of course I've also got an ebook that's out on Amazon that you could look at it's called software requirements for business users simple steps to select the right software for your company and it's by myself Terence Reiber R-E-I-B-E-R and it's meant for business users actually uh, who may not be able to use a consultant to help them but they can certainly read that book and learn how to do these requirements to a certain degree themselves also business analysts might find it of interest because you know if you can teach a business user to do these things you can certainly teach a business analyst to create these kind of documents but this is typically the sort of document you would create to get requirements it might then further on you know go out into an RFP or request for proposal if you want to formalize the process of having vendors respond to your requirements but typically we, we would use a document that looks like this so that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope that this uh, will help you and certainly the website has got a lot more help and my email and contact information is there if you have any questions